Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to have some fun with double strokes. It's something I use a lot. It's great if you're soloing, especially at the end of your solo, you know, the climax of the solo. I'm going to be using these um, uh, Gretsch drums, these old Catalinas that I showed you in an earlier video. They're quiet drums because I'm going to be playing a lot of loud stuff today. So we'll be using this kit today, and real, really quickly, it's a 12-inch tom a 14-inch floor tom, a 16-inch bass drum, a 12-inch snare drum, and small cymbals, 12-inch hi-hats, a couple flat rides. This is a uh, Peisty Dark Sound Creation Flat Ride 16. This is a Peisty Flat Ride 602 18-inch. And this is a really nice cymbal I like. Uh, you can really lay into it. It doesn't get too loud. It's a Zildjian Remix breakbeat ride. And these tiny little hi-hats here, these are Pisces. I put them in the dryer and they shrunk up real nice. So this little kit will be fun to do this video with. Uh, and like I said, it's about double. So we'll be using my book as well, Advanced Coordination for Drum Set and Hand Percussion. And if you go ahead and go to page 121, we'll get started. So I already covered this material when I did a hand foot video, or several of them, uh, as far as just playing them as written. So I'll just show you that now. I'll play the first couple lines as written. And we'll do it at quarter note equals 125. One, two, three, four. So again, if you refer to that video, you'll see me play a lot of these in this section. And these are great for working on hand for coordination as well as for soloing material. You can also play them as grooves. In other words, you can, um, you can play a, a groove thing, uh, ostinato on top of it. That's the first two uh, measures of page 122. So you can go ahead and do that, and that sounds really good as well. So these pages, this whole section, has a lot of purposes, and you can repurpose it for certain things. And today, like I said, we're repurposing it for double strokes. So you can start out by playing every one of these 16th notes from the top of that page 121 as a double. So that first bar would sound like this. One, two, three, four. Now these work for all genres, so you can use them in rock, funk, especially jazz. I'll show you a little of that real quick. Drummers like Philly Joe Jones, Max Roach, a lot of the older great bebop drummers used a lot of these roles. They all had really, really good technique, so this was not a problem. And again, a lot of times at the end of their solos, they would break this stuff out to create the most excitement. So when we break down this first line uh, and we add the doubles with the hands, the best way to do it is to alternate the way it's written and the double. So I'll play the first line for you written and then I'll add double so you can see that. One, two, three, so you see there that I'm playing every note that's written every 16th as a 30, 30 second with my hands and I'm just playing one bass drum note. Now you can play two bass drum notes as well and that'll sound like this. It's extremely difficult and it does sound a little bit, you know, um, mushed, <laughs> I should say, okay? That's just the feeling of it. You're kind of compressing these notes. So it sounds like a constant roll. So let's try the next line the same way, once again at 125. One, two, three, four. All right, 
so hopefully you get the idea. And again, I know this is fast and all, but trying to show you the result of all your practicing will be this kind of speed. Uh, we'll try one more line for you. This line is very tricky. When you have a single note, as you do in the last bar of line three, you're just going to play one double. It almost sounds like a triplet, but it's more like two 30-second notes and a 16th note bass drum. So let's try that both ways. You see there how each single stroke is two thirty seconds there. Now you can also play it on the tom, so not only on the snare drum, but move around the drums. And both ways, so in other words, we could play it as written, all around the drums, improvising, and then add the double. So we'll try that with line one. one. So you get the idea. And then you want to just improvise without looking at any music like this. So you see there, I'm starting to add now the doubles with the bass drum. So uh, at the end of the phrases, uh, as like I said before, a lot of drummers use this, especially Elvin Jones. He would do a lot of this with the bass drum doubled at the end of the phrases. So. So you see how I'm adding that double in there. You know, it's a little bit on the verge of sloppy, but it it's fills up the time. And you should practice this with two and four like I did there on the hi-hat. So let's go ahead and show you how three or four lines of this sounds continuously. And one way I like to practice this is with the snares off. So we'll do that as well. Same tempo, 125. playing a lot of interesting little melodic ideas within those things. And every time you do it, like a lot of things in this book, it should be different. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, the next uh, part or uh, section on 121 starts as written with the singles like this. So what you can do there, again, is play the 30-second notes with the hands. We'll turn the snares back on here. And then you could just play the bass drum as written like this. So that uh, 
makes some really interesting sounds too as well. So you're kind of truncating the rolls there. Don't worry about being perfect there. It's more of an organic thing, you know, where you're kind of playing these groupings. And then you could stretch those into odd groupings like this. So those are triplets, fives, sevens, different groupings, and you see how it just all melds together into this kind of almost legato phrasing. Great stuff. And again, if you have good doubles already, this is not hard to do. But if you don't, it is going to be hard at first until you develop the technique to do that. The last thing I want to talk about today is um, displacing the doubles. So starting on one hand with one stroke and then coming in on the other hand with the doubles like this. So slowly it looks like this. And when you play it fast, we'll go real fast here, about 140. One, two, three, four. A lot of fun, okay? And, but you see what I'm doing? I'm starting with one single and then the left hand or the right hand, whichever hand you want to use, starts playing the double. So everything is moved over 1 16th. Now you can also do some cool grooves with this as well. So you see there, that's, again, doubles, just mixing up uh, some paradiddles, right? But also doing right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, on a lot of that little, you know, funk stuff there, fusion stuff, really. So this is pretty advanced, I know, but uh, you're going to have to work on it slowly. And again, by slowly, I mean... Because you're not going to want to go too slow or else it's not going to make any sense. Really it's much harder to do slower uh, as you do it faster and you get your doubles about this fast. It's going to be easier, believe it or not, to do that. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'll play a little for you and we'll call it a day. One, two, three, four. <laughs>